where Norman castles rise to guard vast, languid estuaries, and Dylan Thomas captured the lyric of daily life, comes a new narrative in southwest Wales, an experiment and an adventure. It begins far to the north, the clean peninsula and seagrass, the only flowering plant in the ocean. Vast fields used to grow around the UK, but 90% have been destroyed in just the last 30 years. Fields which are home to huge numbers of animal species. We know in a hectare in Wales, um, in a seagrass meadow, you're talking about 40,000 individual um, 40, animals, individual animals compared to bare sand. Per hectare? Yes, it's, it is huge. Better at storing carbon than even rainforests are seabed meadows, victims of dredging, human encroachment and above all, sewage pollution caused by the water monopolies. Sewage as well as containing horrible pathogens will also contain a lot more nutrients than a normal water body and those nutrients can encourage algal growth. Um, and then that algae can very much cover, smother the seagrass, um, block its light, and it will stop seagrass growing. So Leanne and volunteers now harvest seagrass seeds, part of a UK and indeed global move to replenish these vital undersea groves. Those seeds then come down here to Larne, Carmarthenshire, south coast of Wales, that land of estuaries, castles and poetry, where Emily Yates personally dug trenches to help set up the UK's first large-scale seagrass nursery. It's almost think of like spider plants, um, kind of tubular, lots of flowers on them, and those flowers turn into seeds, uh, which look just like this. They are just like peas in pods, and this is where it all begins. Outside, a seawater reservoir replenishes the nursery tanks. Inside, machines mimic the tidal ripples of the estuaries. So once the seeds have been collected and harvested, stored, and whenever it is that we decide to plant them out, we plant them into our nursery ponds in the polytunnel. Uh, so here are some that we've actually planted about a month ago now. All right. So a couple of inches growth or something in a month, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can see they've got three leaves, they're growing well. And just look around me here, the scope for expansion is obvious and vast. Indeed, all of these disused ponds could be used for growing seagrass. And the scientists now know that it works. Indeed, just along the coast here in southwest Wales, an area of sea has already been reseeded, replanted and is flourishing. Back in the polytunnel, at around two years old, this. You really do see why it's called seagrass, don't you? Yeah, really, really beautiful ribbons of, of green. About to graduate and be planted in the wild. There are five sites, two Welsh, two Scottish, one English. So if we can just transplant this and take it out and put it as a big old, a big old mat and let it continue, that would be, that would be ideal. And that polytunnel? Well, the persistent southwest Wales rain would soon dilute the salt levels in the tanks, damaging the precious seedlings. So here and across the world, pioneers trying to solve what it takes to restore our seagrass meadows. But scientists stress it's even more important to protect those which still survive. 